Sometimes on the beloved game show Jeopardy, contestants getting answers wrong can result in some hilarious, unintentional comedy. Join Facts First as we explore the absolute worst Jeopardy answers the show has ever seen. A contestant mistakes a love triangle for a threesome. In one memorable episode of Jeopardy, a contestant was given the relatively simple clue of, if Andy yearns for Brenda and Brenda cares about Charlene, who pines for Andy, the three of them form one of these. The majority of people know the answer should have gone something like, what is a love triangle? Instead, the answer the contestant gave was, what is a threesome? Of course, many in the audience figured the contestant was just being cheeky, but the apparent shame in the contestant's eyes, after making the Freudian slip, suggested it was truly an accident. It seems there are some Jeopardy contestants that need to brush up on their interpersonal skills. Was there a hymn in the Bible named Kinky Boots? Another memorable flub by a contestant on Jeopardy occurred when the contestant was given the clue, a Christian hymn and a Jewish holiday hymn are both titled This, also the name of a 2009 Tony-nominated musical. Unless you're a fan of Broadway musicals and an avid reader of the Bible, the question is certainly on the more tricky side. The category was hymns, suggesting the contestant went about answering the question under the presumption that he was supposed to be keeping things biblical. However, the contestant's answer was decidedly unbiblical. Perhaps simply naming the only Broadway musical from that time period he could think of, the contestant answered Kinky Boots. And for those who don't know, the correct answer would have been Rock of Ages. Thankfully, the contestant who made the mistake was already so far in the lead, he ended up winning regardless. Famous Jeopardy! personality Ken Jennings accidentally gets misogynistic. Ken Jennings made a name for himself as a Jeopardy! contestant with the longest winning streak in history, but that doesn't mean he was above making a mistake every once in a while. In fact, he made a mistake during his early days as a contestant on the show that has gone down in history as a biggie. That mistake saw Ken accidentally brandishing a slur that is often used to describe sexually available women. The clue Ken Jennings was given went, This term for a long-handled gardening tool can also mean an immoral pleasure seeker. Of course, those familiar with their old-fashioned vernacular may quickly realize that the answer Ken should have given was, What is a rake? But Ken's mind went somewhere else entirely, and it caused quite a stir. Instead of the correct answer, Ken responded with, What is a hoe? Instantly, Alex Trebek let out a cry of shock and gave the cunning response to Ken's slip-up. Alex made a joke about whether that was the kind of thing Ken was taught in school. And at that point, little could anyone have anticipated that Ken would go on to temporarily replace Alex as the host of the program after the latter figure's death. One Jeopardy! contestant wasn't all that fond of liberals. On another memorable episode of Jeopardy!, there was a slip-up where a contestant accidentally showed his true beliefs about those on the political left. The contestant was presented with a picture of a pinkish flower, and given the clue, the flower pictured here is called this, which is also a disparaging term for people on the political left. The contestant apparently didn't know the correct answer, so approximated as best he could. It seems he went into his brain database and searched through all the names of the flowers he knew that also doubled as insults. The best one he could think of was pansy, so he answered, what are pansies? If you follow the above logic, the contestant certainly wasn't meaning to make a political statement. He was just trying to win. However, it's undeniable that it was unintentionally hilarious, and it made it seem like he had a vendetta against Democrats. For those who haven't figured it out, the correct response to the given clue and picture would have been, what is a bleeding heart? The term bleeding heart liberal denotes that liberals are overly sympathetic, which is much kinder than denoting that liberals are a bunch of pansies or cowards. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. A contestant unintentionally shows their love for the late Latina pop idol Selena. Another memorable Jeopardy flub came when a contestant was asked to define what the term selenophobia meant. The word isn't all that common, and it's hard to divine its etymology from simply looking at it. The contestant certainly seems not to have been familiar with the word, so they went about trying to break down its etymology as best they could. Of course, the two main parts of the word are seleno and phobia, with phobia obviously denoting a fear of something. One can easily infer that the term selenophobia might mean the fear of something or someone called seleno, and seleno sounds like a bit like selena. For most people, the first person who comes to mind when they hear the name selena is the late Mexican pop sensation. With no better answer to give, the contestant then gave the answer of what is the fear of Mexican music stars? Sadly, that answer was not correct, and should have been instead what is an irrational fear of the moon. It was an undeniably fun moment, especially for those in the audience who were fans of Mexican pop. A contestant makes a joke about the Pope. 
All these moments certainly got big reactions from the audience, but it took another level of humor entirely to get a real rise out of Alex Trebek. One of the few moments that got an authentic chuckle from the beloved former host of Jeopardy was when a contestant made a decidedly tasteless joke about Pope Paul III. The category of the question was 16th century names, and the clue the contestant was given went, Paul III roared at him, I have waited 30 years for your services. Now I'm Pope, can't I satisfy my desire? Of course, the word him in the clue suggests unquestionably that whoever the Pope was addressing would have had to have been male. However, which male it was supposed to be was beyond the contestant. Instead, the contestant relented to give the joke answer of, who is Lady Godiva? The play was cheap, but it somehow managed to get a laugh out of Alex Trebek. Perhaps the late game show host just enjoyed seeing religious leaders getting taken down a peg. A contestant makes a reference to Norm MacDonald. Those who are fans of the late Norm MacDonald and his time on SNL will certainly get a kick out of this next memorable moment from Jeopardy. In one episode, a contestant was given the clue of this song from a 1999 animated film about censorship had a word censored from its Oscar performance. Younger audience members may have a much easier time answering the question, but the Jeopardy contestant apparently couldn't do it for the life of her. Instead, she took the opportunity to make a reference to one of her favorite gags from Saturday Night Live. Having no idea what the real answer was, the contestant wrote down, What is the love ballad of Turd Ferguson? For those who don't know, this was a reference to the popular Celebrity Jeopardy sketches on SNL. These sketches featured beloved cast member Norm MacDonald doing one of his best impressions, Burt Reynolds. This moment is made all the more poignant in the wake of Norm's passing. Though there was another memorable Jeopardy flub where an entirely different deceased SNL star was mentioned. A contestant mistakes Johnny Cash for Chris Farley. Chris Farley certainly wasn't a music legend, but that was the category this next clue came in, and the contestant at hand couldn't think of any better answer. The clue went, his 2003 People magazine obituary was headlined Fade to Black. It's certainly true that Chris Farley is a deceased celebrity, though that fact had to have been just about the only rational thing going through the contestant's head when they said, who is Chris Farley? The answer should have been, who is Johnny Cash? A contestant gets cocky. Last but not least, let's take a look at this memorable moment from a 2014 episode. A contestant was given the clue of, in 1891, this European said, perhaps my factories will put an end to war sooner than your congresses. The contestant had no idea what the correct answer was, and instead decided he would try to make the audience laugh. He accomplished his goal and did so by writing, this handsome gentleman, and drawing an arrow pointing up to himself. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these stories was the craziest to you? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.